पेज नंबर सिक्सटीन लेसन टू नेल्सन मैंडेला लॉन्ग वॉक टू फ्रीडम रिटन बाय नेल्सन रोली लाला मैंडेला बिफोर यू रीड पॉइंट नंबर वन अपार्ट एट इज अ पॉलिटिकल सिस्टम दैट सेपरेट्स पीपल अकॉर्डिंग टू देयर रेट्स कैन यू से विच ऑफ द थ्री कंट्रीज नेम्ड हियर had such a political system until very recently they are north america or south africa or australia have you heard of nelson mandela mandela and his african national congress spent a lifetime fighting against apartheid mandela had to spend 30 years in prison finally democratic elections were held in south africa in 1994 and mandela became the first black president of a new nation in this extract from his autobiography long walk to freedom mandela speaks about a historic occasion the inauguration can you guess what the occasion might be check your guess with the news item from the bbc of 10th may 1994 inside the box the news item is given mandela becomes south africa's first black president nelson mandela has become south africa's first black president after more than 3 centuries of white rule mr mandela's african national congress anc party won 252 of the 400 seats in the first democratic elections of south africa's history The inauguration ceremony took place in the Union Buildings Amphitheatre in Pretoria today attended by politicians and dignitaries from more than 140 countries around the world never never again will this beautiful land experience the oppression of one by another said Nelson Mandela in his address jubilant scenes on the streets of Pretoria followed the ceremony with blacks whites and coloreds celebrating together more than 1 lakh south african men women and children of all races sang and danced with joy page 17 activity in column a are some expressions you will find in the text make a guess and match each expression with an appropriate meaning from column b i'll read out the expressions given in column a number 1 a rainbow gathering of different colors and nations number 2 the seat of white supremacy number 3 be overwhelmed with a sense of history number 4 resilience that defies the imagination number 5 a glimmer of humanity number 6 a twilight existence the expressions given in column b which are to be matched with those in the column a i'll read out now the expressions given in column b first a great ability almost unimaginable to remain unchanged by suffering not losing hope goodness or courage second a half secret life like a life lived in the fading light between sunset and darkness number 3 a sign of human feeling goodness kindness pity justice etc number 4 a beautiful coming together of various peoples like the colors in a rainbow 5 the center of racial superiority number 6 feel deeply emotional remembering and understanding all the past events that have led up to the moment now some of the words and their meanings to be besieged by means to be surrounded closely by amphitheater means a building without a roof with many rows of seats rising in steps typical of ancient greece and rome 
Tenth May dawned bright and clear. For the past few days, I had been pleasantly besieged by dignitaries and world leaders who were coming to pay their respects before the inauguration. The inauguration would be the largest gathering ever of international leaders on South African soil. Here, to be besieged by means to be surrounded closely by. Now the next paragraph. The ceremonies took place in the lovely sandstone amphitheatre formed by the Union buildings in Pretoria. For decades, this had been the seat of white supremacy and now it was the site of a rainbow gathering of different colours and nations for the installation of South Africa's first democratic non-racial government. Here, amphitheatre means a building without a roof, with many rows of seats rising in steps, typical of ancient Greece and Rome. Now the next paragraph. On that lovely autumn day, I was accompanied by my daughter Zenani. On the podium, Mr. D. Clark was first sworn in as second deputy president. Then Tabo Mabeki was sworn in as first deputy president. When it was my turn, I pledged to obey and uphold the constitution and to devote myself to the well-being of the republic and its people. To the assembled guests and the watching world, I said, Confer means it's a formal word. Here means give. We who were outlaws means because of its policy of apartheid, many countries had earlier broken off diplomatic relations with South Africa. Emancipation means freedom from restriction. Deprivation means state of not having one's rightful benefits. Discrimination means being treated differently or unfavorably. Today, all of us do, by our presence here, confer glory and hope to newborn liberty. Out of the experience of an extraordinary human disaster that lasted too long, must be born a society of which all humanity will be proud. We, who were outlaws not so long ago, have today been given the rare privilege to be host to the nations of the world on our own soil. We thank all of our distinguished international guests for having come to take position with the people of our country of what is, after all, a common victory for justice, for peace, for human dignity. We have at last achieved our political emancipation. We pledge ourselves to liberate all our people from the continuing bondage of poverty, deprivation, suffering, gender and other discrimination. Never, never and never again shall it be that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression of one by another. The sun shall never set on so glorious a human achievement. Let freedom reign. God bless Africa. Oral Comprehension Check Number 1. Where did the ceremonies take place? Can you name any public buildings in India that are made of sandstone? Number 2. Can you say how 10th May is an autumn day in South Africa? Number 3. At the beginning of his speech, Mandela mentions an extraordinary human disaster. What does he mean by this? What is the glorious human achievement he speaks of at the end? 
Number four. What does Mandela thank the international leaders for? Number five. What ideals does he set out for the future of South Africa? Spectacular array means an impressive display, colorful and attractive. Not unmindful of means conscious of, aware of. Chevron means a pattern in the shape of a V. Despised means had a very low opinion of. Page 19 A few moments later we all lifted our eyes in awe as a spectacular array of South African jets, helicopters and troop carriers rode in perfect formation over the Union buildings. It was not only a display of pinpoint precision and military force, but a demonstration of the military's loyalty to democracy, to a new government that had been freely and fairly elected. Only moments before, the highest generals of the South African Defence Force and Police, their chests bedecked with ribbons and medals from days gone by, saluted me and pledged their loyalty. I was not unmindful of the fact that not so many years before they would not have saluted, but arrested me. Finally, a chevron of Impala jets left a smoke trail of the black, red, green, blue and gold of the new South African flag. The day was symbolized for me by the playing of our two national anthems and the vision of whites singing Nkosi Sikelel Africa and black singing Diestem, the old anthem of Republic. Although that day neither group knew the lyrics of the anthem they once despised, they would soon know the words by heart. On the day of the inauguration, I was overwhelmed with a sense of history. In the first decade of the 20th century, a few years after the bitter Anglo-Boer War and before my own birth, the white-skinned peoples of South Africa patched up their differences and erected a system of racial domination against the dark-skinned peoples of their own land. The structure they created formed the basis of one of the harshest, most inhumane societies the world has ever known. Now, in the last decade of the 20th century, and my own eighth decade as a man, that system had been overturned forever and replaced by one that recognized the rights and freedoms of all peoples, regardless of the color of their skin. Page 20 Rot It's an old-fashioned formal word. It means done or achieved. Profound means deep and strong. That day had come about through the unimaginable sacrifices of thousands of my people, people whose suffering and courage can never be counted or repaid. I felt that day as I have on so many other days that I was simply the sum of all those African patriots who had gone before me. That long and noble line ended and now began again with me. I was pained that I was not able to thank them and that they were not able to see what their sacrifices had wrought. The policy of apartheid created a deep and lasting wound in my country and my people. All of us will spend many years, if not generations, recovering from that profound hurt. But the decades of oppression and brutality had another unintended effect, and that was that it produced the Oliver Tembos, the Walter Sisulus, the Chief Luthulis, 
the Yusuf Dadus, the Bram Fishers, the Robert Subukwes of our time. Men of such extraordinary courage, wisdom and generosity that their like may never be known again. Page 21 Perhaps it requires such depths of oppression to create such heights of character. My country is rich in the minerals and gems that lie beneath its soil. But I have always known that its greatest wealth is its people, finer and truer than the purest diamonds. Resilience This means the ability to deal with any kind of hardship and recover from its effects. Pushed over to our limits It means pushed to the last point in our ability to bear pain. It is from these comrades in the struggle that I learned the meaning of courage. Time and again I have seen men and women risk and give their lives for an idea. I have seen men stand up to attacks and torture without breaking, showing a strength and resilience that defies the imagination. I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. No one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin, or his background, or his religion. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. Even in the grimmest times in prison, when my comrades and I were pushed to our limits, I would see a glimmer of humanity in one of the guards, perhaps just for a second, but it was enough to reassure me and keep me going. Man's goodness is a flame that can be hidden but never extinguished. Resilience This means the ability to deal with any kind of hardship and recover from its effects. Pushed over to our limits It means pushed to the last point in our ability to bear pain. Oral Comprehension Check Number 1. What do the military generals do? How has their attitude changed and why? Number 2. Why were two national anthems sung? Number 3. How does Mandela describe the systems of government in the country? Number 1. In the first decade and number 2. In the final decade of the 20th century. 4. What does courage mean to Mandela? Number 5. What does he think is natural to love or hate? In life, every man has twin obligations. Obligations to his family, to his parents, to his wife and children. And he has an obligation to his people, his community, his country. In a civil and humane society, each man is able to fulfill those obligations according to his own inclinations and abilities. Page 22 But in a country like South Africa, it was almost impossible for a man of my birth and colour to fulfil both of those obligations. In South Africa, a man of colour who attempted to live as a human being was punished and isolated. In South Africa, a man who tried to fulfil his duty to his people was inevitably ripped from his family and his home and was forced to live a life apart, a twilight existence of secrecy and rebellion. I did not in the beginning choose to place my people above my family, but in attempting to serve my people, I found that I was prevented from fulfilling my obligations as a son, a brother, a father, and a husband. Inclinations means natural tendencies or behavior. 
inevitably means unavoidably illusion means something that appears to be real but is not transitory means not permanent curtailed means reduced i was not born with a hunger to be free i was born free free in every way that i could know free to run in the fields near my mother's hut free to swim in the clear stream that ran through my village free to roast mealies under the stars and ride the broad backs of slow moving bulls as long as i obeyed my father and abided by the customs of my tribe i was not troubled by the laws of man or god it was only when i began to learn that my boyhood freedom was an illusion when i discovered as a young man that my freedom had already been taken from me that i began to hunger for it at first as a student i wanted freedom only for myself the transitory freedoms of being able to stay out at night read what i pleased and go where i chose later as a young man in johannesburg i yearned for the basic and honorable freedoms of achieving my potential of earning my keep of marrying and having a family the freedom not to be obstructed in a lawful life but then i slowly saw that not only was i not free but my brothers and sisters were not free i saw that it was not just my freedom that was curtailed but the freedom of everyone who looked like i did that is when i joined the african national congress and that is when the hunger for my own freedom became the greater hunger for the freedom of my people page 23 it was this desire for the freedom of my people to live their lives with dignity and self respect that animated my life that transformed a frightened young man into a bold one that drove a law abiding attorney to become a criminal that turned a family loving husband into a man without a home that forced a life loving man to live like a monk i am no more virtuous or self sacrificing than the next man but i found that i could not even enjoy the poor and limited freedoms i was allowed when i knew my people were not free freedom is indivisible the chains on every one of my people were the chains on all of them the chains on all of my people were the chains on me i knew that the oppressor must be liberated just as surely as the oppressed a man who takes away another man's freedom is a prisoner of hatred he is locked behind the bars of prejudice and narrow mindedness i am not truly free if i am taking away someone else's freedom just as surely as i am not free when my freedom is taken from me the oppressed and the oppressor alike are robbed of their humanity page 24 oral comprehension check number 1 What twin obligations does Mandela mention? Number 2. What did being free mean to Mandela as a boy and as a student? How does he contrast these transitory freedoms with the basic and honorable freedoms? Number 3. Does Mandela think the oppressor is free? Why? Why not? thinking about the text number 1 why did such a large number of international leaders attend the inauguration what did it signify the triumph of number 2 what does mandela mean when he says he is simply the sum of all those african patriots who had gone before him Number 3 Would you agree that the depths of oppression create heights of character 
How does Mandela illustrate this? Can you add your own examples to this argument? Number four. How did Mandela's understanding of freedom change with age and experience? Number five. How did Mandela's hunger for freedom change his life? Thinking about language. Number one. There are nouns in the text formation, government, which are formed from the corresponding verbs form and govern by suffixing ation or meant. There may be a change in the spelling of some verb, noun pairs, such as rebel, to rebellion, constitute, to constitution. Number one, make a list of such pairs of nouns and verbs in the text. For example, the noun is rebellion and the corresponding verb is rebel. Likewise, the noun is constitution while the corresponding verb is constitute. Page number 25. Number 2. Read the paragraph as follows. Fill in the blanks with the noun forms of the verbs in the brackets. Martin Luther King's blank space to be filled with the noun form of contribute to our history as an outstanding leader began when he came to the blank space to be filled with the noun form of the word assist of Rosa Parks, a seamstress who refused to give up her seat on a bus to a white passenger. In those days, American blacks were confined to positions of second-class citizenship by restrictive laws and customs. To break these laws would mean the blank space to be filled in with an appropriate noun form of the word subjugate and another blank space to be filled in with an appropriate noun form of the word humiliate by the police and the legal system. Beatings blank space to be filled in with the appropriate noun form of the word imprison and sometimes death awaited those who defied the system. Martin Luther King's tactics of protest involved non-violent blank space to be filled in with an appropriate noun form of resist to racial injustice. Now the second, using the definite article with names. You know that the definite article the is not normally used before proper nouns nor do proper nouns usually occur in the plural. We do not say the Nelson Mandela or Nelson Mandela's. But now look at these sentences from the text. The decades of oppression and brutality produced the Oliver Tambos, the Walter Sisulus of our time. Used in this way with the and or in the plural, a proper noun carries a special meaning. For example, what do you think the names above mean? Choose the right answer. A. For example, Oliver Tambo, Walter Sisulu. B. Many other men like Oliver Tambo, Walter Sisulu. Many men of their type or kind whose names may not be as well known. Did you choose option B? Then you have the right answer. Here are some more examples of the used with proper names. 
try to say what these sentences mean. You may consult a dictionary if you wish. Look at the entry for the. Number one. Mr. Singh regularly invites the Amitabh Bachchans and the Shah Rukh Khans to his parties. Number two. Many people think that Madhuri Dikshit is the Madhubala of our times. Number three. History is not only the story of the Alexanders, the Napoleons and the Hitlers, but of ordinary people as well. Page number 26. Now the third is the section dealing with idiomatic expressions. Match the italicized phrases in column A with the phrase nearest in meaning in column B. There is a hint. First look for the sentence in the text in which the phrase in column A occurs. A. Number 1. The phrase is, I was not unmindful of the fact. And now you have to choose the sentence nearest in meaning to the one which we have just now read from column A from these three. Number one, had not forgotten. That means was aware of the fact. Number two, was not careful about the fact. Number three, forgot or was not aware of the fact. Number two, now the sentence with the second phrase in column A. When my comrades and I were pushed to our limits. Now we have to choose one of the sentences in column B from the three given. Number one is pushed by the guards to the wall. Number two took more than our share of beatings. Number three felt that we could not endure the sufferings any longer. Now the third phrase in the sentence is in column A, number 3 to reassure me and keep me going. And the sentence to be chosen from the three given in column B are number 1 make me go on walking Number two, help me continue to live in hope in this very difficult situation. Number three, make me remain without complaining. Now the fourth phrase in the sentence in column A, number four, the basic and honorable freedoms of earning my keep. The sentence nearest in meaning so this phrase is to be chosen from the three given in column B. Number one is earning enough money to live on. Number two, keeping what I earned. Number three, getting a good salary. Speaking. In groups, discuss the issues suggested in the box as follows. Then prepare a speech of about two minutes on the given topic. First, make notes of your speech in writing. True liberty is freedom from poverty, deprivation and all forms of discrimination. Point number one. Causes of poverty and means of overcoming it. Point number two. Discrimination based on gender, religion, class, etc. Point number three, constitutionally guaranteed human rights. Now writing. Number one, looking at contrasts. Nelson Mandela's writing is marked by balance. Many sentences have 
two parts in balance. Page number 27. Use the following phrases to complete the sentences given as follows. Number 1. They can be taught to love. Number 2. I was born free. Number 3. But the triumph over it. Number 4. But he who conquers that fear. Number 5. To create such heights of character. Now the incomplete sentences are Number 1. It requires such depths of oppression. Blank space. Number 2. Courage was not the absence of fear. Blank space. Number 3. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid. Blank space. Number 4. If people can learn to hate. Blank space. Number 5. I was not born with a hunger to be free. Blank space. Now the second, this text repeatedly contrasts the past with the present or the future. We can use coordinated clauses to contrast two views for emphasis or effect. Following are the sentences carrying one part of the contrast. Find in the text the second part of the contrast and complete each item. Identify the words which signal the contrast. This has been done for you in the first item. The first item is For decades, the Union buildings had been the seat of white supremacy and now and now the second. Only moments before, the highest generals of the South African Defence Force and Police saluted me and pledged their loyalty. Not so many years before, they would not have saluted. Blank space. Third, although that day neither group knew the lyrics of the anthem, they would soon. Blank space. Number four. My country is rich in the minerals and gems that lie beneath its soil. Blank space. Number five. The air show was not only a display of pinpoint precision and military force, but blank space. Number six. It was this desire for the freedom of my people that transformed blank space into a bold one that drove blank space to become a criminal that turned blank space into a man without a home. Third, expressing your opinion. Do you think there is color prejudice in our own country? Discuss this with your friend and write a paragraph of about 100 to 150 words about this. Page number 28. You have the option of making your paragraph a humorous one. Read the short verse as follows. When you were born, you were pink. When you grew up, you became white. When you are in the sun, you are red. When you are sick, you are yellow. When you are angry, you are purple. When you are shocked, you are grey. And you have the cheek to call me coloured. In this lesson, what we have done. Shared Nelson Mandela's moving description of his inauguration as South Africa's first black president and his thoughts on freedom. What you can do? Divide your class into three groups and give each group one of the following topics to research. Number one, black Americans and their fight against discrimination. Number two, women 
and their fight for equality. Number three, the Vietnamese and their fight for independence. Choose a student from each group to present a short summary of each topic to the class. Homophones. Can you find the words as follow that are spelled similarly and sometimes even pronounced similarly but have very different meanings? Check their pronunciation and meaning in a dictionary. The bandage was wound around the wound. The soldier decided to desert his desert in the desert. Page number 29. The lesson is A Tiger in the Zoo. It's a poem. And this poem contrasts a tiger in the zoo with the tiger in its natural habitat. The poem moves from the zoo to the jungle and back again to the zoo. Read the poem silently once and say which stanzas speak about the tiger in the zoo and which ones speak about the tiger in the jungle. Now the poem. He stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his cage on pads of velvet quiet in his quiet rage. He should be lurking in shadow sliding through long grass near the water hole where plump deer pass. He should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge, bearing his white fangs, his claws, terrorizing the village. But he is locked in a concrete cell, his strength behind bars, stalking the length of his cage, ignoring visitors. He hears the last voice at night, the patrolling cars and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars. The poet is Leslie Norris. Page number 30 Glossary Snarls means makes an angry warning sound. Thinking about the poem Number 1. Read the poem again and work in pairs or groups to do the following tasks. Number 1. Find the words that describe the movements and actions of the tiger in the cage and in the wild. Arrange them in two columns. Number 2. Find the words that describe the two places and arrange them in two columns. Now try to share ideas about how the poet uses words and images to contrast the two situations. Number two. Notice the use of word repeated in lines such as these. Number one. On pads of velvet quiet in his quiet rage. Number two and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars. What do you think is the effect of this repetition? Number three, read the following two poems, one about a tiger and the other about a panther. Then discuss. Are zoos necessary for the protection or conservation of some species of animals? Are they useful for educating the public? Are there alternatives to zoos? Now the two poems. The first poem is The Tiger. The tiger behind the bars of his cage growls. The tiger behind the bars of his cage snarls. The tiger behind the bars of his cage roars. Then he thinks... It would be nice not to be behind bars all the time because they spoil my view. I wish I were wild, not on show. 
But if I were wild, hunters might shoot me. But if I were wild, food might poison me. But if I were wild, water might drown me. Then he stops thinking, and the tiger behind the bars of his cage growls. The tiger behind the bars of his cage snarls. The tiger behind the bars of his cage roars. The poet is Peter Niblett. Page number 31 The Panther. This is the second poem in succession. Now the poem. His vision from the constantly passing bars has grown so weary that it cannot hold anything else. It seems to him there are a thousand bars and behind the bars no world. As he paces in cramped circles over and over, the movement of his powerful soft strides is like a ritual dance around a centre in which a mighty will stands paralysed. Only at times the curtain of the pupils lifts quietly. An image enters in, rushes down through the tensed, arrested muscles, plunges into the heart and is gone. The poet is Rainer Maria Reich. Number four, take a point of view for or against Zeus or even consider both points of view and write a couple of paragraphs or speak about this topic for a couple of minutes in class. The greater cats, the greater cats with golden eyes stare out between the bars. Deserts are there and different skies and night with different stars. It's a poem written by Victoria Sackville West. Page number 32. 